Good day everyone and welcome back to SCP Illustrated. Today we are summarising SCPs 300 to 399. As usual you can expect implied violence, torture and injury. And without further ado, let's begin. The following data release has been authorised by the following council members and administration staff. SCP-300 A World in a Bottle SCP-300 is a glass bottle containing anomalous liquid. When a single drop is extracted and viewed for a microscope, it will show a pastoral or woodland scene. No two drops show the same scene. SCP-301 Teleporter SCP-301 is an anomalous region roughly 3 meters in diameter located in the middle of a national park. When a person enters it, they will be teleported to another location. The process can take anywhere between several seconds to several minutes. The destination is random and has resulted in several fatalities. SCP-302 Ant Sculpture SCP-302 is a small tin sculpture depicting two ants carrying a leaf. When a person makes physical contact with the sculpture, an ant will soon appear on their body. As the days increase, so too will the number of ants be manifesting on the subject's body. The process will continue every day until the subject dies from stings and bites. SCP-303 The Doorman SCP-303 is an emaciated humanoid with a large mouth and oversized human teeth that will randomly manifest behind a closed door. Any person attempting to open the door will experience paralyzing fear that will not cease until SCP-303 dematerializes. SCP-304 The Signal SCP-304 is a radio signal that transmits a continuous list of the names and titles of various world leaders and even some O5 council members. As such, the actual content of the transmission is level 5 classified. SCP-305 The Whisperer SCP-305 is a humanoid formation of rocks. When a person views them, cracks in the rocks will begin to form lips and begin whispering to the person. It starts by whispering compliments, followed by insults. Several hours after the cessation of contact, SCP-305 will manifest and kill the subject. SCP-306 The Frogs SCP-306 is a fungus that can infect any biological matter through inhalation of spores or through skin-to-skin -skin contact. Infected humans will undergo an excruciating process that dramatically alters the body. Weight loss, shrinkage of internal organs, and restructuring of the skeleton will ultimately result in the subject becoming a small amphibian creature similar to a frog or toad. SCP-307 Carnivorous Ivy SCP-307 is a species of ivy sometimes referred to as spider ivy by Foundation staff. When in the presence of a warm-blooded animal, it will grow exponentially towards them. Upon making contact, the animal will be paralysed. SCP-307 will then liquefy and drain all internal organs, musculature, and blood. SCP-308 Aztec Burial Sarcophagus SCP-308 is an Aztec funerary casing with resurrection properties. Regardless if the subject is dead or alive when placed inside the casing, the same process will follow. When the subject is then removed from the casing, they will resume all bodily functions. Subjects drained of blood will become animate and show an active heartbeat despite no blood pressure. Whether it be poison, cancer or trauma to name a few, SCP-308 will always sustain or resurrect the subject in the state they enter the casing. Post-resurrection, the only way to terminate the subjects is to destroy their hearts. SCP-309 Plush Toy SCP-309 is a plush toy that resembles a plush toy that has been turned inside out. If a subject makes contact with SCP-309 for only a few seconds, they will be violently turned inside out. While the skeleton stays in place, all tendons, muscles and organs will be resituated to the outside. While excruciating, the process is not immediately fatal. SCP-310 
Eternal Flame. SCP-310 is a standard tallow candle. While the flame can be extinguished, once the cause of extinguishment has been removed, it will reignite. The candle does not burn down, and any tallow removed will be replaced over time. If the flame comes into contact with any combustible substance, it will burn the substance until the fuel source has been exhausted. Unlike the candle, these flames cannot be extinguished. SCP-311 Tactical Displacement Gloves SCP-311 are a pair of average black gloves. When worn, any damage done to the wearer's hands will instead be projected onto any other person that the subject thinks about or focuses on. SCP-312 Atmospheric Jellyfish SCP-312 is an organism that resembles a jellyfish that floats high above the ground. It is capable of creating small clouds to hide within. SCP-312 preferably preys on humans and will float above them for sometimes weeks or months on end in a docile state. When a victim looks up and views SCP-312's core mass, the subject will be drawn up into the organism, paralyzed and digested. SCP-313 Powerful Hand Dryer SCP-313 is a standard hand dryer as found in most commercial bathrooms. When activated, there is a 1.5% chance of superheated plasma exiting the dryer as opposed to hot air. The plasma exits at temperatures of 25,000 Kelvin and with 650 kilonewtons of force. SCP-314 Motion Seeking Blade SCP-314 is a metallic obelisk with edges sharpened to the molecular level. It is sentient of its local environment and operates within a 52 meter radius referred to as its kill area. Any moving object that comes into its kill area will be swiftly attacked until it ceases movement, exits the kill area, or is reduced to pieces small enough to be ignored by SCP-314. SCP-314 can move at speeds that break the sound barrier and can even cut through sustained gunfire. SCP-315 The Recorded Man SCP-315 are 95 standard DVD format discs. When an unwatched disc is played, a well-furnished living room will present with a Caucasian man in his 40s within it. The man will communicate with whoever is watching and actively respond to questions and engage in conversations. However, if a watched disc is played, it will show only the responses to previous conversations. SCP-316 Color Draining Light SCP-316 is a bronze-aged carbide lamp with an unknown metal making up the internal circuitry. When powered, it creates an opaque beam of white light. Shining this light onto any non-reflective surface will remove all traces of color from the object, leaving it in tones of gray. The effects are the same for organic life, however color returns within 24 hours, alongside feelings of nausea and depression. SCP-317 Cretaceous Physicist SCP-317 was apparently an unknown species of dinosaur that developed higher intelligence. It wore polymer robes, learned to communicate with humans, and was attempting to fix a time machine it had in its possession. SCP-317 died from an infection while within Foundation custody. SCP-318 Soul Press SCP-318 is a crude rotary printing press with a number of other attached machinery. When a recently deceased cadaver is placed into SCP-318 and activated, a piece of paper will be produced containing human DNA. This paper will contain the consciousness of the cadaver that was placed into SCP-318. It appears fully capable of seeing and feeling, and can even respond to questions by drawings and writing appearing on the paper. SCP-319 a curious device. SCP-319 is a mechanical device that contains a vacuum with different physical constants to our own universe. When anything from our universe enters the vacuum bubble, it is completely annihilated due to quantum structure incompatibility. The slightest vibrations can cause disturbances to the SCP-319 mechanism, allowing the bubble to expand slightly. Once the bubble expands past the SCP-319 device, 
it will continue to grow without pause at the speed of light. SCP-320 Higgs Field Acceleration Manipulator SCP-320 is a small glass sphere with a vacuum contained inside. When the sphere is thrown or otherwise achieves a form of motion, its gravity will exponentially increase, however its momentum will remain proportional to the amount of force used to propel the sphere. The increase in gravity acts as a singularity and pulls all matter in its path with it. This can result in serious destruction and alterations in Euclidean space. SCP-321 Child of Man SCP-321 is the result of an SCP researcher attempting to resurrect his stillborn daughter using SCP objects. The resulting female humanoid has very low intelligence, continues to grow well over 3 meters tall, and can heal damage 5 times faster than a regular person. SCP-322 Grow Your Own Castle Kit SCP-322 is a cardboard box containing an instruction pamphlet and a glass jar full of large grains of sand. When a single grain is planted and the instructions adhere to, a stone fortress will result after seven days. SCP-323 Wendigo Skull SCP-323 is an unidentified cervoid skull that exerts an influential effect. Those exposed for about one hour will begin experiencing cannibalistic thoughts and urges, violent outbursts, and impaired judgment. Continued exposure will result in victims attempting to bludgeon their own heads to fit within the skull. Wearing the skull will cause a number of bodily mutations, coupled with a massively elevated caloric intake to prevent starvation, with human meat being the only desired food source. SCP-324 Uology Shrub SCP-324 is a shrub. When a recently deceased mammal is buried beneath SCP-324, its anomalous properties will begin. The roots will begin to grow through the mammal, and SCP-324 will begin producing flowers and berries. If a person ingests these berries, they will experience a memory from the deceased mammal, as if it were their own. SCP-325 The Detergent SCP-325 is a container of regular washing detergent. Wearing clothes washed in the detergent will prompt a person to become obsessed with hygiene and cleanliness. As time goes on, however, their obsession will become more severe. After exposure, the subject will begin cleaning everything they can find, then leading to rejection of everything deemed unclean, then leading to drinking bleach and using their own blood to clean contaminated surfaces. SCP-326 a Chinese Peasant SCP-326 is a human female who has been extensively experimented on by the Chinese government in the late 1950s. She is very thin but heavy and is covered in a number of large scars. When SCP-326 becomes distressed or agitated, the scars will rupture and an exoskeleton of bone will emerge and give SCP-326 enhanced speed and strength. SCP-327 the Mermaid SCP-327 is an unknown mammalian species resembling a manatee with a number of distinct features. The flippers end in fingers with a fully opposable thumb, and the head is that of a human female. SCP-327 produces vocalizations in the form of songs that create audio-visual hallucinations in humans and accelerated reproduction rates in algae and plankton. SCP-328 Alien Disc SCP-328 is a CD from an alien version of the SCP Foundation that documents their experiments and studies around a laptop from Earth that somehow found its way to their world. SCP-329 The Cancer Garden SCP-329 is a cellar with several beds containing a number of cancer patients. The subject should all be long dead, however remain alive indefinitely so long as they remain within the room. Their cases are severe with some tumours being several feet long. A recovered video displays a number of religious radicals promoting cancer as the regrowth of the Garden of Eden. SCP-330 Take only two SCP-330 is a bowl of wrapped candies. If a person takes as many as two pieces, nothing will happen. If a person takes three or more pieces of candy, however, their hands will be instantly surgically removed Without immediate medical assistance, 
the subject will likely die from shock and blood loss. SCP-331 Tumbles SCP-331 is a cat collar that resurrects dead cats. Fur and skin will continue to decompose at the regular rate, with no signs of distress being shown by the cat. The internal organs, however, will not decompose. SCP-332 The 1976 Kirk Lonewood High School Marching Band SCP-332 is a marching band. Anyone hearing the music they play will immediately seek a musical instrument and join the band. If they cannot find an instrument, they will pretend to play and mimic the sound. Affected subjects will continue playing until they pass out from exhaustion or starvation. The subjects will then be trampled by the other band members. SCP-333 City in a Symphony SCP-333 are a number of copies of an unknown musical score. When the score is played by a specific number of musicians, leaving the chamber or room the score is being played in will lead to another dimension. The dimension is home to a hostile and invincible entity. Once the score has finished, the alternate world and anything within it will dematerialize. SCP-334 Stellar Vulpine SCP-334 is a mass of superheated plasma in the form of Vulpus Vulpus, also known as the Red Fox. It acts in a manner identical to that of a regular fox and takes in nutrients by converting matter into plasma. It is considerably difficult to contain due to its physical makeup and is unaffected by Earth's gravity, which allows it to float off the ground. SCP-335 153.5 inch floppy disks SCP-335 are 150 floppy disks with a seemingly infinite amount of storage space. The disks contain the entire internet on them. The first 12 contain all the pornography present on the internet. SCP-336 Lilith SCP-336 is a highly intelligent narcissistic introvert of Middle Eastern descent. She does not age or get sick, and is anatomically identical to a human, except for reptilian scales along her legs. Depending on a person's chromosomes, exposure to SCP-336 can result in two outcomes. A subject will either become infertile, or tissue will separate from the subject's ribcage and form a similar instance of SCP-336. These new instances are violent, possess limited intelligence, and usually expire within two weeks. SCP-337 Hairball SCP-337 is a mass of interwoven human hair. When within 30 meters of a human possessing any amount of body hair greater than 5 centimeters in length, it will locomote towards them with great speed. It will then pin them to the ground before painlessly removing all of the hair on their bodies to become part of SCP-337's mass. SCP-338 A Portable Radio SCP-338 is a portable crank and battery powered survival radio that is capable of receiving anomalous transmissions on a number of different frequencies. SCP-339 Be Silent, Be Still SCP-339 is a weathered copper mass with a number of tendrils extending off of it that are constantly in motion. If a sound is made above 14 decibels, SCP-339 will become hostile. If any organism moves within line of sight while in a hostile state, SCP-339 will rapidly ensnare the organism in its tendrils. Once the object or organism has been immobilized, SCP-339 will return to its normal shape. A secretion of blood and muscle and skeleton slurry will then leak from the central mass. SCP-340 Viral Rebreather Membrane SCP-340 is a jelly-like mucus that covers the lower half of the face as a response to a human catching an unknown virus with traits similar to HIV and SARS. This mucus will allow a person to breathe underwater, however when the subject leaves the water, the mucus will harden to the point it is impossible to remove without causing severe tissue damage. SCP-341 A Collection of Extrasolar Orreries SCP-341 is a collection of 11 brass and iron orreries that display a number of accurate and real solar systems that are not our own. SCP-342 A Ticket to Ride SCP-342 is a transit ticket 
that will change its form to match that of any ticket required to board a form of transport. However, subjects will not be able to leave the form of transport once on board and will become increasingly agitated and paranoid. At the end of the transport's journey, the subject will vanish from reality and the ticket will be left behind. SCP-343 God SCP-343 is an entity that has convinced the SCP Foundation that he may be God. However, several heavily corrupted documents instead imply that SCP-343 is not God and is instead manipulating people and his own file to maintain the facade. SCP-344 Schrodinger's Can Opener SCP-344 is a seemingly ordinary can opener. There is a chance that when the can opener is used to open a can, that can will be filled with live specimens of whatever is canned. For example, opening a can of tin tuna might result in several tuna fish suddenly emerging out of the can. SCP-345 Stone Puzzle Cube SCP-345 is a puzzle cube similar to that of a Rubik's Cube, but instead of different colours, it has different types of rock. If a side is completed, then one of a number of hazardous events will occur. After this is finished, the cube will open to reveal a small model planet made of the same rock as the side that was completed. If the cube is completed without opening any of the sides, then the resulting model planet will begin to grow and undergo the same process as the formation of a planet, up to about 2 meters in diameter. SCP-346 Terry the Pterodactyl SCP-346 is a small unknown member of the pterodactyl family. It is relatively small, about the size of a bat. It is believed this is the result of malnutrition and a cramped enclosure during its early life, prior to coming into Foundation control. SCP-347 The Invisible Woman SCP-347 is a young female somewhere between the ages of 19 and 25. She is completely invisible but can be seen on infrared cameras. Other than being a compulsive kleptomaniac, she is relatively harmless. Male staff are to refuse any sexual advances from her as to avoid invisible pregnancies. SCP-348 A Gift from Dad SCP-348 is a white ceramic bowl that will fill with one of a variety of soups when in the presence of a person with an ailment or minor injury. Consuming the soup will make people feel generally happier and that their symptoms have alleviated slightly. SCP-349 The Philosopher's Stone and the Graveyard of the Immortals SCP-349 is a graveyard that contains a number of burial plots where apparent immortals were buried alive and left to rot and decay in the ground. All the exposed graves reveal bones and dust, coupled with signs of scratching and attempts to tunnel to the surface. SCP-350 Unbreakable Contract SCP-350 is a contract that changes to offer a viewer's greatest desire in return for money. If a subject then signs the contract, they will be granted their desire. If a subject doesn't pay the specified account, they will become increasingly paranoid and be compelled to pay the account. Once this is done, another term will then appear that the subject will be compelled to carry out. This will continue until the subject is prevented from doing so, at which point they will slowly die from various complications. The terms of the contract will become increasingly more severe, including terms that specify the murder of friends and family. SCP-351 Read-Only Memory SCP-351 is an ASC-2 plain text file containing a virulent memetic agent, which implants false memories visualized as ASC-2 art into human subjects that view the file. SCP-352 Baba Yaga SCP-352 is a very old and emaciated human woman that feeds on human flesh. It produces hair-like strands from its body that contain an enzyme that promotes several feelings, including euphoria and suppression of pain receptors. While within this state, SCP-352 will remove the subject's limbs to prevent escape and consume the prey over the course of several days. SCP-352 can heal from any injury it sustains, including decapitation and disembowelment. SCP-353 Vector SCP-353 is a human female who has the ability to siphon infectious viruses and bacteria from her local environment. 
she can store these contagions in her body and then expel them to create large-scale pandemics. She currently has more than a thousand infectious contagions currently stored within her, including malaria, HIV, cholera, SARS, bubonic plague and Ebola to name a few. More worryingly, she possesses a number of undiscovered contagions and some that were thought to have been eliminated, such as smallpox and Spanish flu. SCP-354 The Red Pool SCP-354 is a large lake filled with a red liquid that gets increasingly denser the further down into the pool a subject goes. Periodically, random entities will emerge from the pool. The nature of these entities is highly variable, but most show elevated levels of violence and aggression. SCP-355 The Serrated Lawn SCP-355 is a species similar to that of regular grass, however it possesses a structure that is capable of piercing light wood and some plastics. Any organism without sufficiently armoured feet that treads on the grass will be pierced by the grass and have an acid administered into their bodies. This acid liquefies the internal organs, allowing the resulting slurry to be used as nutrients for the grass. SCP-356 Auto-Interrogation SCP-356 is a 62-year-old male who died from cardiac arrest while within Foundation custody. While alive, any device capable of receiving a telephone call within 3 meters of SCP-356 would ring indefinitely. When answered, an unknown voice would constantly talk about SCP-356's life, ranging from work histories to daily habits. SCP-357 – Hungry Clay SCP-357 is a malleable substance like that of Play-Doh. It resists all radiation and does not have any discernible atomic structure. It will expand and reproduce to fill the edges of any container it is placed inside to a depth of 1mm. Any object placed onto SCP-357 will slowly sink into it and become part of SCP-357. SCP-358 A Deserted Hospital SCP-358 is an abandoned hospital that shows heavy signs of neglect and degradation. The inside is much hotter than the outside and a percentage of people entering the hospital will begin to undergo symptoms similar to those of being in a desert environment. Subjects will become increasingly thirsty, disorientated, suffer from heat stroke, and finally die from poisoning by one or two desert dwelling predators. SCP-359 The Hawk SCP-359 is a metallic sculpture of a hawk on top of an arch. By day, it does nothing. By night, it will become animate, gain the ability to fly, and hunt down animals for food such as deer and farm animals. SCP-360 Ascendance SCP-360 is a ritual that allows a single living human subject to ascend to a higher plane of existence. It has to be conducted at a height of 10,500 meters, which poses a risk to public and private aircraft. Viewers describe the individual gaining luminescent wings, a halo, and hearing orchestral music before the subject then disappears and is never seen again. SCP-361 Bronze Liver SCP-361 is a bronze sculpture in the shape of a sheep's liver. The sculpture is covered in the titles of various gods and instructions. When the real liver of a sheep makes contact with SCP-361, removed no more than three hours prior, a disembodied voice will recite one set of instructions, allowing a person to communicate with one of the gods inscribed on the bronze liver. SCP-362 A Cool T-Shirt SCP-362 is a standard medium-sized T-Shirt. Wearing the shirt presents no anomalous properties. Upon removing the shirt, however, the wearer will see a number of shadowy figures that will stare at them. They will not move unless the subject moves, and only then to the point that they can keep visual contact of the subject. If the subject approaches them, they will move away from the subject to avoid making physical contact. SCP-363 Not Centipedes SCP-363 are regular centipedes within normal conditions. When in severely dim or dark locations, however, the centipedes will grow to up to 10 meters in length. They will hunt down any organism that exhibits body heat. Furthermore, eggs are laid and fertilized in the bodies of paralyzed prey before hatching and killing the host. SCP-364 Ionian Drop Point 
SCP-364 is a wormhole above a volcano on Io. Periodically, materials from an alien world will fall out of the wormhole and drop into the volcano to be incinerated. It's basically a hole that aliens throw all their crap down instead of into landfill. SCP-365 Pool Noodle SCP-365 is a green pool noodle. When placed in a body of water alongside a person, that person will be unable to get out and describe themselves in an infinite sea with no bottom and no edge and begin panicking. The only way to end this effect is to remove the pool noodle from the water which will remove the effects. SCP-366 Carriage Grubs SCP-366 are alien embryos that fall to earth via meteor showers and are then inhaled by human males. From there they are passed from males to females during sex and just stay in the womb before exiting three to six weeks later. Finally, the spawn will then fly upwards and away to an unknown space system. SCP-367 Little Dog SCP-367 is a single cell organism that looks like yellow slime but takes the external form of a small puppy. SCP-367 can feed on practically any material and has been observed consuming concrete, wood, bones and titanium. It is relatively harmless to humans unless it is not fed for more than three hours. At this point, it will become highly aggressive as it seeks out a food source. SCP-368 Paper Crane SCP-368 is an animate origami crane folded from ornate heavy stock paper. It will act like a regular bird and happily fly around Foundation offices. It enjoys receiving affection from staff and will even perch on people's shoulders from time to time. Copies of SCP-368 can be made by placing the original in a photocopier. SCP-369 Living Migratory Roadwork SCP-369 is a collection of construction vehicles and equipment that will move from road to road repairing patches of road in need of repair. The road undergoes an organic healing process when not being observed. Attempts to disrupt the repairs will result in the person being covered in liquid road tar. SCP-370 A Key SCP-370 is a key. The size, shape, material and general appearance of SCP-370 are unknown. Knowing any of these characteristics will prompt the manifestation of one of three different diseases that will prompt a subject to either commit suicide, commit murder or actively try to infect others. SCP-371 Macrovirus SCP-371 is a marine virus that is often mistaken for a jellyfish and can reach up to 2 meters in length. When it makes contact with an organism, it will inject data packets into the host. These data packets will begin fusing with the host's DNA to create spawns of the original virus. Once they reach a particular size, they will explode out of the host's body, causing massive trauma and bleeding. SCP-372 Peripheral Jumper SCP-372 is an incredibly nimble creature of unknown origin. It will jump and hide from anyone who tries to see it, and usually hides in people's blind spots. If a person does see the creature, it will be little more than a blurred blip in the corner of their eye as it hides from view. SCP-373 Ghost Record SCP-373 is a phonograph with a number of entities trapped within it. When a record is played on it, every fourth word is replaced by a word from a sentence one of the entities is saying. One of the entities asked if they were in hell. SCP-374 Oracular Guillotine SCP-374 is a guillotine. When used to decapitate a person, the headless body will reanimate with the personality of a certain Frenchman. The body is able to hear, speak and even see despite the lack of a head. The Frenchman in question though believes the Foundation to be a group of murderers. SCP-375 Forever Alone SCP-375 is an anomalous bank that uses cognito hazards to persuade people into depositing valuable items in exchange for something of the same value. This level of value is proportional to the level of value the depositor assigns to the object being deposited. If a person is deposited and then taken out some time after, they will have undergone some bodily alterations that the bank staff refer to as compound interest. 
SCP-376 The Traffic Light Tree SCP-376 is an organism structured in the same way as a tree but resembles a traffic light with multiple other traffic lights sprouting off of it. While the exterior looks like polished metal, it is actually tree bark. Unlike trees though, SCP-376 requires electricity to survive as opposed to undergoing photosynthesis. SCP-377 Accurate Fortune Cookies SCP-377 is a box of fortune cookies. The fortunes within are specific to whomever opens the cookie, 100% accurate, and are not always of a positive nature. One fortune alluded to bad weather, and the research was struck by lightning later that day. SCP-378 Brainworm SCP-378 is a large species of centipede that can create smaller versions of itself. These smaller versions are able to infect, kill, and then control other human beings with no one even realizing the host is dead and being controlled by a centipede. One particular host is of great sentimental value to SCP-378. The Foundation is exploiting this by threatening to harm the host unless SCP-378 complies to infect and control high-level people beyond the SCP Foundation's level of influence for their own means. SCP-379 Mechanical Theramone SCP-379 is a glass bottle with a colourless liquid inside that has the strange effect of inducing a state not unlike human infatuation upon electronic and mechanical devices. SCP-380 Biological Networking Device SCP-380 is a network router that instead of connecting to other computer networks, connects to organisms such as humans, animals and plants. The connected computer will show the organism's body temperature, heartbeat, glucose levels and more. SCP-381 The Pyrotechnic Polyphony SCP-381 comprises of seven unbound pages of yellowing paper sheet music. Anyone touching the pages will begin singing the music. When a certain part of the music is reached, all non-Roman Catholic Christians in the area, including the singer, will spontaneously burst into flames that cannot be put out and will not go out until the person has ceased all life functions. SCP-382 Haunted Baby Carriage SCP-382 is an aged pushchair with a rusty frame, degraded wheels, and no form of cushioning. Periodically, a heavily emaciated and injured infant will manifest within the pushchair. Anyone viewing the baby will be compelled to then push the pushchair in circles. As time goes on, the subject will begin to degrade while the infant looks healthier and the pushchair is restored. When the subject eventually dies from massive organ failure, the infant and pushchair will return to their original states. SCP-383 Variably Useful Flu SCP-383 is a virus that initially creates symptoms like those of the common cold. SCP-383 prompts people to regurgitate a number of different items. These items can range from items such as keys to get out of locked rooms, or even harmful substances such as kitchen knives and boiling water. The process requires biomass, however, so regurgitating lots of objects can lead to anemia and severe weight loss. SCP-384 Let her in. SCP-384 is currently an access door. When someone goes through the door and closes it behind them, the room will begin to fill with tar to a depth of 3 cm. The tar will also move up the walls and cover the ceiling. At this point, a little girl's voice can be heard pleading for help. SCP-385 Personal Anti-Gravity Field Generator SCP-385 is a product of the factory that counteracts the influence of outside gravitational forces upon the device and an individual wearing or holding it, as well as neutralizing their inertia. Wearing the device, however, is fatal. Once removed from Earth's gravity, the wearer will be flung out into space or collide with any object in its way. SCP-386 Eternal Fungus SCP-386 is a species of mushroom that is extremely resilient to damage and can reproduce very fast. The danger SCP-86 presents are in its spores. The spores are microscopic in size, 
resistant to anything including fire and acid, and are fatal if inhaled or ingested. The spores will grow into fully sized mushrooms before filling the airways and causing fatal internal hemorrhaging. SCP-387 Living Lego SCP-387 is a box of Lego that when touched by a human hand, will become animate and start enacting any role that the handler has placed the Lego figures in. If left alone, the Lego will begin to evolve and take on more responsibilities related to the original setup. SCP-388 Ultimate Frisbee SCP-388 is an indestructible frisbee that when thrown, will cleanly slice through any object in its path until it comes to a rest. SCP-389 Message in a Bottle SCP-389 is an indestructible glass bottle. When thrown into the sea containing a note, on the following day's high tide, the bottle will return with a reply inside to the original message. SCP-390 Ancient Death Ray SCP-390 is the remains of a mechanical device dating back more than 2,000 years. The device is capable of generating intense heat, focused at a distance of up to 1,200 meters, causing water to vaporize and flammable materials to ignite within seconds. SCP-391 The Midas Owl SCP-391 is a barn owl that regurgitates precious metals after ingesting food. Regurgitated metals include gold, silver, and platinum. SCP-392 A plant now found in Site-103 and formerly found in the Households of Nobility. SCP-392 is an artificial species of a plant created via Davite Thermatology. Instead of flowering seeds, it instead flowers human heads. The heads have no eyelids and the seeds are located in the prefrontal cortex. They display active brain functions and respond to external stimuli. When removed from SCP-392, they will begin to decompose. SCP-393 The Memory Planner SCP-393 is a day planner that has an ability to link to any person by unknown means. If the subject writes an event in the past dates of the planner, the subject will remember the event as if it actually happened to them. Writing an event in the future will not elicit any response until that day comes, at which time the subject will recall the event. SCP-394 Ear Candles SCP-394 are regular ear candles. When placed in a subject's ear, they will enter a comatose state and afterwards report fantastical dreams. All the time this is happening, the subject will begin to lose body fat. While this process continues, the candle will not burn down. Once the subject has no more body fat to burn, the subject will begin to desiccate and harden with the flesh taking the consistency of dried meat. The subject will usually die within 10 minutes of all their body fat being lost. SCP-395 The Baby Bottle SCP-395 is a human fetus contained in a specimen jar. The jar is filled with a standard formaldehyde solution with traces of blood. Any female coming within 5 milliliters of SCP-395 will remove the fetus from the jar and allow it to feed in the normal way. All females produce milk, no matter their medical status. Once the milk supply has been exhausted, the fetus will begin drawing blood and feeding on the subject's flesh. SCP-396 And Suddenly Chair SCP-396 is a chair that will randomly teleport and switch with another chair somewhere on the planet. Any person sat on top of it will be teleported with the chair also. Due to its nature, it is impossible to contain. SCP-397 A Hominidae SCP-397 is an intelligent sapient female chimpanzee that was discovered after a number of coordinated attacks on villages by a band of primates. SCP-397 has a strong distaste for human society and has made several escape attempts. SCP-398 The Greeting Hall SCP-398 is a hallway with a number of doors. The hallway and the contents of the room will change to something familiar with anyone that travels down the hallway. The room will either entice someone to enter them or scare the person into venturing further down the corridor. No one who has ventured down the corridor has returned. SCP-399 
Atomic Manipulation Ring. SCP-399 is a ring that allows the wearer to manipulate and change things. If the wearer attempts to make an object levitate, the ring will draw in a small amount of energy from the local atmosphere, causing a minor drop in temperature. More specific commands might require more energy that can be taken from generators and nuclear reactors even. If there is no suitable energy around, the ring will take it from the wearer. And that concludes SCPs 300 to 399. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to like and subscribe if you did. Be sure to check back at the end of March for the next load. If you heard any of them that you quite liked, be sure to go and read the full files on the wiki for loads more information and content. Remember to follow all the social media outlets for video updates. Check out the SCP Illustrated shop for posters and prints. All the links can be found below. And if you don't want to wait weeks for new material and want to get even more exclusive content, then consider joining the Patreon for early video access, see all the sketches early, get exclusive sketches, request your own SCPs, get Discord access, and so much more. And thank you to Horizons, Dr. Viewless, Andre, Tiger Shark, Hithel, Exalted Galaxy, Andy98, General's Alert, JT Walker, SCP-106A, Rick Trexon, and Sam B. Huge thanks to Steamy, Hunter Killer, Lenhox, Captain Core and Kibara, and huge thanks to Quill, Kokam, Gilbert, SCP-682, Viger, Kamana, and Zanan. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you all soon, and take care.